Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and our experimental, our very first sculpture using the new paper cement clay is all done now. With the exception, I haven't actually glued these two pieces together yet. I'm going to do that just as soon as this video is done. Now I made the, the, the casting of the squash leaf first and I've got a video showing you how to do that. I've got a video showing you how I put the paper cement clay over the armature for the toad. Um, and I'm going to put links to both of those down below. And of course, I'm going to also put a link to the actual recipe that I'm using. It is an experimental recipe. Um, this is the first thing that I've tried to make and actually put it outside. But I know a lot of other people are also experimenting with it. So by next spring here in the northern part of the world and next fall, I guess, um, down south, we're going to find out how well it'll handle both summer and winter weather in a whole lot of different places and by then we should know whether or not we can use this for permanent outdoor sculptures. I'm really hoping that it holds up really well because I had a lot of fun with this guy. I really like all the bumps. Let me show you really quick. The The bumps weren't showing up very well because of all the pattern you know painting that I did on here so I was a little disappointed in that and then when I sprayed it with with this stuff matte clear enamel um it just put just enough of a shine i don't know if you're gonna be able to see it or not all those bumps popped back up again so that so you can see them let me show you now how i painted both the the leaf casting and the toad i used the paint that i had in the house i'm not going to say that this is how you're supposed to do it this is an experiment i didn't want to run to the store and buy paint i did have to buy the you know the glue and the spray but that was, that was enough for this particular project. Um, so I just scrounged around. I used whatever I had. It doesn't look exactly like any particular kind of toad. The, the green isn't exactly right <laughs> for this particular uh, species of squash. But I still really like the way they came out. So let me show you how I did it. I started with the leaf casting first. And there are spots on the on the real leaves that are really light. They're almost silvery, really. So I mixed up some green that I happen to have in the house. I don't have a lot of green, so I was <laughs> really kind of messing around with this part. Um, I just found some and it, it was too bright, so I added a little bit of red. And as you can see, I got I didn't mix it up quite right. <laughs> it's a little bit of a spot of red on there, but it's going to get covered up with the darker green anyway. I just went ahead and covered all of the leaf. There's a lot of water in this mixture. I wanted it to be really wet so that it would soak into the paper cement clay. I got a lot of advice from different people saying that that would be a really good idea. So I, I did do that and I just covered the whole entire leaf with it. When the light green was dry, I found some hunter's green in my stash and I mixed it with some red and just kind of blocked in the areas where I, I didn't want any green. I wanted those spots to show up, uh, the light spots. You can see under my arm there, I actually did bring a real leaf into the house so I could kind of see whether or not I was <laughs> getting the right colors and, and the spots in the right place. And this first layer of green was just way too light. But I went ahead and, and covered everything except for the light parts with it anyway. And then I'm going to go back over it with some darker color. The next layer was made with hunter green and burnt umber, which made a much darker green and is much closer to the real leaf. Not not quite exactly right, <laughs> but it was closer and close enough. Now, after I got all of the um, the dark parts covered again, just kind of loosely so that there would be a little bit of variation in the greens, then I went uh, back over the light parts with a, a wash of this color. I just added a whole lot of water and washed it over the, the light parts and then dabbed it back up with uh, paper towels. And that left really, really fine lines where the casting had left the, um, the, the shape of the veins, the really light veins in those lighter parts of the leaf. So it turned out really nice. Then I figured that was done and I moved on <laughs> to the tote. 
I wanted a basically gray toad because that's the color of the one that lives out by my garage. So I just mixed up some paints that I had. I don't want to give you the exact <laughs> names of all these paints because I really am just using things that I have on hand, including some of them are just the latex paints that my daughter Jessie used when she showed us how to make some really nice fur colors with latex. I don't want you to run out and, and buy any of these colors because I just used what I had on hand. It's a light gray and you can mix that up just with um, black and white if you want to. And then I, after that was dry, I mixed up a darker and warmer gray and put over it. Both of these layers have a lot of water, and that's why you're seeing the, the spots show up so well. The darker gray is just kind of um, floating into the, the little lines in between the spots. I don't know how to say that exactly, but <laughs> um, it's giving a variation of color, which I really liked. And I just went ahead and covered the whole thing with that color. Then I used a really tiny stencil brush and made some black spots. It looks kind of random, but I am using photographs that, that I'm looking at to kind of come sort of <laughs> close to the patterns that you usually see on a toad. The only one that really mattered as, as far as I was concerned was that there's a, a light stripe right down uh, the back, and I didn't want to cover that up with the spots, but I just can't went ahead and made spots all over him, and then I didn't really like the fuzziness of him, and I didn't really like the fact that it was just all gray. That, that just looked a little bit boring to me, so I mixed up a little bit of a warmer color, kind of dabbed it on. Wasn't really excited about that either, but I went ahead and painted his eyes black, <laughs> and those fuzzy uh, spots just were still really bugging me. So I got out a smaller brush, I mixed a little bit of water with pure black, and I went back around all of those little spots. It was kind of tedious, but when I was done, it looked a lot better than just dabbing those spots on with a stencil brush. I found some gold paint and I painted that onto the eye, leaving the, the black pupil, of course. There, there's a very strong um, clear stripe right around the pupil and then around that are just some spots of gold and I, I think they turned out really nice but I still wasn't too happy with the overall toad. It was just still kind of boring. Then I found another photograph of a toad that was living in South Dakota but it, I believe it's called a Canadian toad and it had a lot of burnt sienna just pure burnt sienna all the way along his back a little bit on the front of his leg front legs and then it had some darker spots of like burnt sienna mixed with black uh, just all along uh, on some of those um, bumps that he has on, on the side and he had some freckles on his face and after I had put that on the, the toad, I was really happy with it. It actually looks much more realistic this way. Even though it's still a generic toad, it's not, you know, it's not an exact copy of anybody in particular, but I, I'm still really happy with him. I put a spot of white on his eyes just to give it look like it was reflecting light. And then I went back over some of the gold just to make it a little bit crisper right around the edges. And at that point, I figured he was done. So now both the leaf and the toad were painted and obviously they're not stuck together yet. But I did let the paint cure for a couple of days before I sealed it. And you might have noticed that I did not seal the actual paper cement clay first. I looked online to see how to use masonry sealer. Do you put it on before or after painting it? That was my big question. And there were so many articles that were really contradictory. Some of them said, yeah, you got to do it before you paint. And, said, and other ones said, no, no, don't, don't do that. I don't know. I just got real tired of it. So I <laughs> went ahead and bought something instead. I used this Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Enamel. It says it's, it's for indoor or outdoor and it seals paintable surfaces. This has been painted, so that's what I'm going to use. Um, I, don't, I don't know how well it's going to hold up because I've, I've never used this before. So this is also an experiment. What I intended to use, because I already had it in the house, I bought this 
Rust-Oleum Leak Seal. You can see it's still in the bag. <laughs> I haven't even opened it. But the reason that I bought this is because our friend Linda uh, made a, a, a mushroom. I'm going to show it to you right here. That's actually one of the most popular posts on my website. She didn't make a video, but it is on my website. I'll put a link to it right down below. She used this Leak Seal on it three or four years ago I can't remember when she put that post up but I've heard from her recently and it's still outside and she made it using the regular original paper mache clay recipe I, I don't use regular paper mache of any kind outside but she says this stuff actually works and so I was going to try it but I wanted something that wasn't shiny I just wasn't sure about this um waterproof a flexible rubber coating i also wasn't quite sure if i got the right one to see if it was paintable just didn't know so i decided to use this instead now the next thing i have to do is um glue these together there's very few spots really really small spots where they will actually come together i don't think that anything is really going to hold it very well enough so that i can actually lift this thing by the toad because it just isn't enough area for the glue. I am going to use this E600. A lot of people recommended that. So what comes next is I am going to glue it together. I'll let the glue cure for a little while too. And I'm going to put him out in the garden. We're going to leave him until probably next May. That's when it usually starts to thaw out around here. <laughs> I'm in Minnesota. It's, it stays cold for a really long time. I'll get back with you. Be sure and watch for the video. Maybe put it on your calendar or something if you haven't subscribed to the channel. Um, I want to make sure that you actually find out whether or not this stuff works. If you have made anything with this new paper cement clay and your own experiments, please come over to my website and show them off on the Daily Sculptures page. There's a link to it at the top of you know every page on the site. You can go ahead and show us some photographs of it. Let us see what you've made and then come back again. <laughs> after it's been outside summer and winter so we can find out if your experimental sculptures um, lasted out in the actual weather too. I actually did like using the paper cement clay a lot maybe even more than the original paper mache clay recipes so I probably will be making some things for inside with the recipe but I'm not going to put them outside, except for this guy, until we know for sure that it's going to last. Now I am going to start on another project now. That's going to take me a while. Um, I've also got a lot of work out, out in the garden. Probably a lot of canning to do pretty soon because the garden is doing really well. Um, but I think my next pattern project is going to be one of two things. Um, a rhinoceros head to go on the wall, like, you know, with the, with the elephant. That would look really cool. Or a dragon. So he'd go on the wall too. <laughs> so if you have a vote for, for one of those uh, pattern ideas, please let me know. Now, like I said, I am going to be in the garden and I have a, a question for you. This has nothing to do with paper mache whatsoever, but I've noticed that around here, I'm the only person who, in my town who has expanded my garden because of hearing about the, the potential, the very real potential for food shortages this year. I thought that everybody in town would be out there digging up their yard, but nobody is. And that really confuses me. I don't get it. So if you happen to be a person who has heard about the food shortages and you haven't started to garden, I'm sure you have a really good reason for it, but I, I'm totally confused about it. So please let us know why not? <laughs> I would really be interested in that. Now, in the meantime, um, if you, like I said, if you're going to experiment with this, please let us know how your experiment turns out so that we can learn from each other. And in the meantime, come visit me at ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.